I'm Robin Hackett, and welcome to Access Central TV. And I'm about to present another segment of Being Alive. And here we are in the Upper West Side at Bean. And once again, I am with Joseph and Michael. And today we have a special guest. Gail is joining us today. Um, the thing that I wanted to talk about today, Michael, you write stories. Yeah. And one particular story caught my eye and seems to be of importance to me today. The title of it is There Are No Victims. So I, I wanted you to talk about that a little bit. Everyone has a group of friends. I'm sure you'll find at least a, a few of them that you feel sorry for. And you're trying to, you know, do your best to help them. And you, you feel that this person, you know, has a very difficult time in life. And you have a great time in life, relatively. And you, and you have to take a look at that person that is, are things the way they appear to be? Because that's the way you summed it up, right? I'm doing good, I got a good job, this, you know, and but poor, you know, they really, and you have to see, um, you feel that you have the, the, upper, ha the upper hand, right? Yeah. So, okay, then you, what if you went in their position and they went in your position, and you feel what it's like for them, because you're so busy trying to help them, what it would be like to be them? You try to be them, you feel their life has like juice in it. They feel they know where they are, where they're going. They feel more together than you do. You have to see that you're struggling to lend them a hand and they're kicking back. While on the surface, it may seem that they're really, you know, entrenched in an awful thing. Then you have to ask yourself, why are they like that? So this brings me, um, I know that you wanted to discuss something, uh, some planetary matters. Um, so your question and what you want to talk about exactly. Um, one of the things that I'm really concerned about is the planet. And I think a lot about how what's happening to the planet is related to human well-being. Um, on all levels, psychological, physical, um, and I'm just curious as to what you think about that. Can't, can't disregard what's happening in the planet, but it really isn't the best starting point. It's a starting point. It's not the best starting point. Because it really is nothing more than a reflection of what's going on where the true starting point is. It's with yourself. As you begin to work and resolve these inner planetary static -y kind of situations, you then become more aligned with a way of living that is nothing but more than a harmonious, appropriate way of being in the, with the planet. It's a contagious, contagious thing also, I and mean, that's the beauty of it all. But to start from the outside, right, is, is placing the blame outside, it's placing the cause outside, it's placing the solution outside, it's placing everything outside, and leaves us... Victims. Victims. <laughs> That's what I wanted to get to. Are we the victims on the planet? No, our choices are, are, our choice to become a victim, as Mike was saying, is quite appropriate. We choose a role of victim. We can choose to start with ourselves and see what part do we play internally in all this. You know, how, how do I create my war with my neighbor? Not just our war with, with another country. How do you bring it to a larger, a larger scale? You can't until you bring it to, to your, yourself. Yeah, yeah. It's where you place your consciousness. Right. You say it's about consciousness, yes. I'm telling you it's about where you place your consciousness. Right. Where do you want so, to? Okay. So it's the, the task is really with, lies within each one of us and we can only be responsible for what we each do. Is that yes, what you're we can, saying? We can, create, we can create a wonderful framework of, of great humanitarian approaches, and, uh, and this is really going to go against popular opinion probably, um, systems that support the planet and so on. But as long as that's backed up or originally driven by someone who has no foundation, who has not looked at this within themselves, then we're doing it for reasons that we've picked up from others. Not from any naturally internally driven reason. Right. If it's an internally driven reason, it's usually based in guilt or fear 
or desire for something quite selfish. Right. Normally, anything outside is what I would call being displaced. Something that you actually ex have experienced or experiencing now, you are not really experiencing, so you're displacing it by pointing it somewhere else. So if you have some latent guilt, meaning you have some unresolved, resp unfulfilled responsibility that you feel that you didn't do, that is just an excuse waiting to happen. It's a problem waiting to happen. So you're going to pick up a US, the newspaper or the, and you're going to pick up the next thing to get you behind rather than to actually experience what it is that you are doing in life. Or not doing. Or, that's much better. It's what you're not doing. And normally you're not doing has very little to do with the outer circumstances that you think it's falling on. Normally it has to do with that you didn't phone your baby brother. You knew you were supposed to phone him, you know, and you didn't phone him. So now you're, you're saving the seals. What does it have to do with it? So, mm -hmm. yeah, I know what I was thinking of before. It's the, just the idea that um, if we're not coming from the right place with our understanding of planetary sustainability, that we're just sort of moving the furniture around. Um, it's not going to, um, in the long term, it's not going to take us where we need to go because the foundation isn't there. We have no clue what's driving us. We have no clue why we're really doing it. If really exam, if really question, you ask someone what's driving them, you'll get a lot of, uh, uh, I'm not, I don't know, I'm sure, I think, uh, or, and, or what everyone else has told them that they should be doing at that point in time. Because also, if we were coming from that place within ourselves that we were really clear about these things, we wouldn't be doing the kinds of things that we're doing to begin with. Exactly. It wouldn't even be part of our um, actions or thinking or anything. It just wouldn't even exist. So. It's easy to feel helpless and a, a victim while you're looking outside uh, to fix things that are going on outside. Because then you feel also righteous, because I'm saving not myself only, but everyone else. Or I'm going to sacrifice myself for everyone else. And so you're still forgetting the self. You can't do a thing until that self is together. Because otherwise you have splintered selves running in several directions. So, okay, I, I'm throwing paint on people's fur coats and... Uh, you know, I'm saving, you know, the dolphins and I'm, you know, giving to the kids in the inner city and I'm splintered everywhere. And then I go home and yell at my kid and tell them how, you know, how they should be doing better and pressuring them, you know, to, to, to become a professional dancer, player, skater. Uh, and I justify it all because I'm such a great person outside. Okay. I think that kind of sums up uh, <laughs> there are no victims. Um, thank you, Gail. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Joseph. And we'll be back again next week for another segment of Being Alive. I'm Robin Hackett for Access Central TV. <laughs>